Now, spare a thought for the mammoth ambitions of a young man who is aspiring to run for a seat in the House of Representatives in the Surulere Lagos constituency that's been vacated by the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, who is now Chief of Staff to the President of Nigeria. Henry Nwokike seems determined enough and he says he's aiming to make sure his ambition doesn't drop out of the sky. But in an ethnically divided world in which he is seen as a non-indigen and in which the powers that be in the APC in Lagos appear to have already anointed a preferred candidate, and that preferred candidate is clearly not him, is he operating in his own bubble vacuum? What sort of confidence and record does he have to challenge both his opponents and the powers that appear to support them? Is his aspiration dead even before arrival, destined to crash out quicker than a ray of light? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now from our studios in Lagos by the industrial chemist, meter service provider and author turned politician Henry Mwokike. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. You can hear me, I hope. Thank you, Charles. Good evening. Right. So, so talk me yeah, through. Yeah, sure. Brilliant. Talk me through why you are aspiring to run for the House of Reps under the APC in Surulere, Lagos, briefly. Okay, um, actually, like you've highlighted earlier, the just concluded 2023 general election brought a lot of ethnic, tribal, and religious divide in our country. We do not have any other country except Nigeria. And everywhere meaning Nigeria, should think of how to unify the country from whichever quarter you are operating from. When I discuss with people within Surrey, within my workplace, you see this bitterness and anger, people venting their anger across religious and tribal lines. And it is not what you can. How many people can you talk to? Nigeria is over a population of 200 million people. So, the moment this opportunity presented itself, I said, OK, as a member of the All Progressive Congress, that it is time I use, seize this opportunity to actually talk to uh, the non-indigenous in Lagos that APC is not a tribal sentimental party. If you come in, you have a level playground for everybody to strive to aspire on your aspiration. Then as for our uh, landowners, the Lagosians, the people that own the land, it is also I'm coming out to also let um, them know that non-indigenous are charitable allies in the All Progressive. I'll be, I will be talking in the confide of my party, the All Progressive Congress. So that's precisely why, because I've had the heartbeat of the party leaders, this this, this, this assumption in the public place, it is not the heartbeat of the party leaders. At the echelon of the leadership of the party, everybody is important. Everybody is welcomed. Everybody is, is, it has a role to play. So it, it, little, it baffles me that when you now discuss with people on the lower echelon, you see division, you see sentiment. And I said, OK, let me use my candidacy coming out to really tell people whether you are Igbo, Aosa, or a do south south wherever you come from there is a place for you in the all progressives don't listen to what people are saying out there come in and tell them if you don't say you are here nobody will know you are there you might be nursing an aspiration and you go to the grave with it nobody cares so if you have a role to contribute, if you feel you have something to offer to our country, APC has provided that platform. If you go into the antecedent of the current president of the country, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, dating far back in, the, in 2000 when he was the governor of Lagos State, he worked very well with the non-indigenous. 
He provided a levy program, and even the non-indigenous administration, they, 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 they offered the services that was expected of them. Look at the lineup of his cabinet. Some of my brothers, when you talk and they will say, no, don't go there, they don't welcome you, they won't welcome you, they won't give you the chance. But you see that the Igbos have some juicy positions even in this cabinet, more than what we've gotten before. So where is this thought of uh, segregation and being relegated, the Igbos being relegated to the background coming from? It's like somebody... You've not tested the water and you're drawing conclusion. In, in, in philosophy, they say hasty generalization. So that right. is why I've said no. Let me step into the water and, and, okay. Right. Well, I have to say that listening to you, you're, you're very inspiring. And you, you certainly sound excited about Nigerian politics. Um, I would imagine that... The APC big wigs are dizzy with, with happiness at the promotion that you're giving them, even though a lot of people in Nigeria may not necessarily agree with your very optimistic assessment of the political picture. But certainly you, you sound like you're sizzling in your seat with enthusiasm. Um, so let, let me ask you this then. Um, what sort of emotional connection do you have with Surulere in particular and Lagos in general? Oh, if, if the, the, the emotional connection was teared up by the exemplary leadership of our leader, Honorable Femi Wajabia Miller. This is somebody across party divides. If you come to Surere, whether you are in the Labour Party, the PDP, the testimony has been the same. If leadership is what Honorable Femi Bajamina has, has done, if, if Nigeria leaders, sorry, let me rephrase, if Nigeria leaders can emulate, the, I call it, I will borrow from, the, from His Excellency, the, the President of Nigerian Senate, um, on our, uh, Senator Goswil Abbebio, I will borrow from his word that he has uncommonly transformed Akwa Ibom State. Governor Goswil Abbebio brought a, an uncommon definition of governance during his time as the governor of Akwa Ibom State. And if you ask me, I will use that word that Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller has uncommonly transformed Surure Federal Constituency. What he has done in Surya Federal Constituency, I tell you that if you match the record side by side, most governors in Nigeria cannot beat his record. I come from a state, uh, Abia State precisely, and I stand to be corrected. I have had governors in the last 16 years put together whatever they've done in Abia State. It is not 5% of what Honorable Femi Bajabina Miller did in just Surure Federal Constituency. When you live in Surure, see the roads, the quality of the road, the quality of roads he brought. In Surure, we can sleep with our eyes closed. There is nothing like uh, phone snatching. Uh, it's so serene, the environment is so serene. And he didn't fall from air. He, he, he so much redefined security approach. In the midnight, if you wake up in your house in Surrey, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you see police patrolling with vehicles and security gadgets provided, facilitated by Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila. Surrey is so littered up that it, it, it doesn't welcome crime, crime committing at night. If you come to the area of hospital, hospitals within Surrey can compete with teaching hospitals across Nigeria. If you come to stadium, I think Surere should be the only local government that has about five stadiums. Okay, well, aside, you, you, you've, made, the, you've made a lot of points there. We're running out of time. But let me, let, so let me, let me ask you, I mean, some would say that given what you've said about um, Femi Bajabia Mila, um, some would say that your attempt to run on the heels of such a large political figure like him, who's represented Surulere for six consecutive terms and has been the Speaker of the House of Representatives and is now Chief of Staff to the President of Nigeria, is you simply trying to offer some light relief in a 
fiercely competitive political environment. I mean, what would you say to those people who say his shoes are simply too big for you to fill? Of course, I, I must admit that uh, Honorable Femi Bojabi Amila has left a very big shoe, not just for me, but for anybody who will be stepping in into that shoe, the shoe is so large. And you must be somebody who is innovative, who is creative, who will also who will be willing to learn on his foot. Because it takes a man who knows the road to lead you on the path, to step into that shoe. And I tell you what, I have quickly outlined uh, four cardinal points. We are a war, so governance is a continuous pro pro process. I'm not going to do everything within this space if, if given the chance to step into his shoe. One, uh, uh, he has really laid the foundation for anybody to co come in to build on it. The roads are there, the infrastructures are there, the areas I'm now looking at, the population of Surere is, is, is about a million plus. 2006 census put it at about 503,000 persons, but now I know it's about a million plus. Therefore, there is housing deficit within Surreal. So within, if I'm given the opportunity, I will, I will leverage on the, 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 the legacies of Femi Bojabi Amila to who investors who will come and put up high-rising towers. I was at a real estate uh, and agency meetings, their annual general meeting last two weeks. And I told them that if, when we come on board, that I told them to support the ambition of uh, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila and the APC to produce the next representative. Because when we come on board, look at what we'll be doing. Go look on. at what we'll be doing in the area of housing. We, we investors, we have a Rick Moore Tower in Surrey, we'll be looking at replicating this Eric Motawa in order to ease the housing deficit. Okay, very quickly, what are the other things you, you want to do? Bungalows. What are the other things you so, want to do very quickly? Because we've only got about a minute the, or so. In the area, we want, I'll be looking at wind investors who will come and industrialize Surrey. And the first, before we do that, I'm a player in the power sector. We are going to, I'll, I'll be working on closing the metering gap within Surere. If the metering gap can be closed up to 100% within Surere, I will liaise with Eco Electricity to ensure that, is, that there is 23 to 24 hour supply within Surere. Then industrialists can come and we'll get, we intend to get industrial in, uh, investors who will put up high rising industrial tower. When they put up this high rising industrial tower, industries, industries can come and list them floor by floor. And when, lease, when they list them floor by floor, knowing that there is security, there is steady power supply to support any form of production that you will be doing, then these people will come take up this floor. That will create jobs within Surere and the housing, the high rising towers that will be getting investors that will come to build towers uh, housing towers within Surrey. These towers, we don't want the management staff of these industries to live in Lekki, Ikoi, and the rest of it. We are, pre we are providing this, this high rising uh, housing towers will provide a befitting housing, a befitting housing scheme for them. So that also goes a long way to improve on the revenue of Surrey local government and Lagos State in general. Okay, well, you've made some, some interesting points there. Obviously, you have to win the primary and then win the seat in competition with of other course. parties. Uh, when, is, yeah. when are you expecting the primary to take place? Actually, our great party has not fixed time for the primary, but we are preparing. Everybody is preparation in, is on top gear. There are candidates uh, where there are other candidates who are also juggling, trying to woo support, trying to tell people, marketing themselves. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you, Henry, who but in the party primary. And right. OK, well, we wish you all the very best. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but um, we wish you all the best and come back and talk to us. And here's the industrial chemist, meter service provider and author turned politician, Henry Nwokike, talking to me there from our studios in Lagos. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos. Bye bye and thank you for watching.